Hello and welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast. Today we've got a great guest on. His name is Dr. Eric Rubinstein. He is an assistant professor at the University of Georgia's College of Agricultural Leadership, Education, and Communication, and he's going to talk to us today about ag ed programs. Now, I met Dr. Rubenstein at the University of Florida while I was taking ag ed programs, and he was a TA in a bunch of my classes. And he is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to ag ed programs and agriculture in general. He's going to talk to us today about ag ed and the three circle model, which includes FFA, SAE, or Supervised Agriculture Experience Programs, as well as instructional. He is also going to talk about something he's very passionate about, which is experiential learning and the four processes for that, as well as teaching in ag versus teaching about ag and how Georgia is one of the first states to introduce elementary school ag education programs. So it's going to be a great talk. Thanks for listening and hope you enjoy the podcast. Well, welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast, Dr. Eric Rufenstein. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. So give us a little bit of your background. You you grew up in Pennsylvania. You, you were a state officer in Pennsylvania, right? I was, yeah. And state officer in Pennsylvania, you taught middle, high school, now college. So give us a little rundown of what got you into ag ed and what you're doing now. Yeah, you know what? Uh, when I was starting high school, I thought about what I wanted to do with my life. And at the time, I really thought that I wanted to be a veterinarian. And so uh, like most students that I interact with now, I I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. So I went and I worked for a vet and I realized very quickly that I didn't necessarily think I wanted to be on a um, exact schedule as far as when I was going to be on call and all that kind of stuff. And so after working for a vet for about a year and a half, I decided that was probably not the route that I wanted to go. I loved what I was doing. I loved helping animals, um, but I just did not feel like the schedule was what I was looking for with my life. So at that point, I was in just about to go into my senior year of high school, and I had a chance to do a supervised agricultural experience program. And my teacher approached me about working with an eighth grade or excuse me, a seventh grade uh, life science class. And so I decided to do that and I just fell in love with teaching and I fell in love with working with students and helping them connect what they knew about life and what they knew about their world and what they had learned from other people and connecting it to something that was proven um, through that science course and that science curriculum. So um, after I, I graduated from high school, um, I did serve as a year for the, as a state FFA president in Pennsylvania, and then I went to Penn State and did uh, a bachelor's degree in agricultural and extension education with a minor in civic and community engagement. Um, after that, I taught uh, three years of middle school and high school agriculture in the state of Pennsylvania before going back to the University of Florida, where I did my master's and PhD. Um, and now I've been a faculty member at UGA in teacher education um, for the last five years. Nice. You know, I'm 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 pretty surprised that you got through UF because I've heard that you had some pretty boneheaded students back then. I, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I mean, you would know well. You know well. I no. would know very well. Yeah. Uh, so so you taught like the the trifecta, middle, high, and college. What what was it like to teach each? You know, each one has their own their own pros and their cons. I guess you could say. Um, one of the things that I loved about middle school was that it didn't matter what you did, they loved just being engaged and they loved seeing someone that was excited. Um, and so most people that have taken a class with me know that I come into class and I, I typically have a bit of excitement about me. Um, I, I want to make sure that whoever I'm teaching knows that I'm excited to be there and I, it's, a, it's just an exciting uh, time of my day um, to be able to spend time with them. And so that's one of the things that I really liked about middle school is it really didn't matter what you did. As long as you were excited, they were excited. Um, and as long as you kept that change of pace going, um, they were really excited about that as well. High school is where I saw that, I mean, they were great. I really enjoyed my high school students because I got to see a little bit more maturity. Um, I got to watch students that I could trust with some things that I didn't necessarily get to do with my middle school students. Um, but they were starting to figure out who they wanted to be. They were starting to figure out kind of where they wanted to go and the career paths that maybe they wanted to take. Um, but they were still moldable. Um, as they got to that senior year is the, the one time that you really started to see um, some real issues about um, their ability to uh, 
to kind of engage just because they wanted to really know more about I guess you could say they wanted to know more about outside of school and, and the world around them um, than necessarily what you were able to teach them sometimes in curriculum. Uh, now with high school or with college students, I really see a lot more um, of students that are just really engaged. They want to know what you're talking about because it's something that they really relate with and that they're really interested and passionate about because potentially that's their career um, and what they want to go into. Um, I see you still see some of the same things with uh, students that and that, that lack of motivation sometimes, but I really think that it's an opportunity to kind of see a well-rounded student that is really engaged and wanting um, to really make a difference in the world. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah, I can imagine you'd be a little bit more comfortable letting uh, high school students weld or use a cutting torch on their own as opposed to like a, a sixth grader. I'm sure that would be a little un unnerving. It is, and you do it <laughs> um, because it's part of that curriculum and it's part of what they need to learn. Um, uh -huh. But I mean, there is there's just there's some things that you just feel a little bit more nervous about. Now, having having had middle high school and college level ag students, have you noticed anything that kind of separates ag students from regular students aren't enrolled in ag classes? Have you noticed something different that kind of sets them apart? You know, I, the one thing I would say is that I think we find a lot more connections between whoever the teacher is and that student when they come to an ag class, simply because there's multiple years for them to actually engage and there's multiple years for them to really build a, a well-developed and deep relationship with that teacher. And so most of the time that connection really then facilitates additional learning in the classroom. And so we actually see that in a lot of theories and and talking about this idea of modeling. And so when we can find that model and they find someone that they can relate with and they want to be like, um, that, that student's typically going to learn more in those environments than an environment where they don't necessarily relate with that teacher. And so I think that's one really cool thing that we see with ag students. The other thing is, is that for those students that continue to take our ag classes over and over again, typically, again, it's something that they're passionate about. And I think that it's, I think most of our students find ways to actually apply the knowledge that they learn in these other classes that they don't really know that they're learning. Um, and they, they sometimes question why they're learning. They then see the real application of why it's important. And I think that's really cool. And one of the things that I think is really cool about our job is that we can help them find real world meaning with the things that they're learning every day in classes that they may not really know why they're learning it. Gotcha. Uh, now, one of the best things I learned uh, doing ag ed at UF, and it was one, one of my favorite things about just being an ag teacher, is we've got the three circle model, and we learned it in every other class we took, the importance of FFA, SAE, and instruction in ag ed to give the students the best educational experience that they can while in an ag program. Uh, just Can you kind of talk to us about the importance of the three circle model in ag education? Well, you know, the real reason that I think that the three circle model has become so well known or it's become so foundational to ag education is because we're really trying to bring in all facets of that student's life to engage them and in, in, um, keep them involved in the ag program and help them learn. And so the classroom is all about that book knowledge or that strong content component. The SAE component is all about real world application and real world situations where they're going to have to make decisions that are going to affect the outcome of some sort of project or an enterprise that they're engaged in. And so it's a way for them to see what it's like to be an adult before they actually have to step into that world. And then on that FFA side, it's all about this idea of personal development and leadership development and team development. And so all of those soft skills that employers are looking for today, we're really able to develop them through, I mean, membership in and involvement in the National FFA organization. And so if you look at that three circle model, it's really about fully developing that student as a whole, rather than just thinking about how well they can do on a standardized test or how well um, they're going to do uh, when they get to a, their, their SAT or in college. It's really about developing them to be a productive and active member of society. Exactly. Uh, now, you and I, we've both been to a whole bunch of different ag programs across Florida, um, and each different one is kind of unique. They all have different, I guess, the percentage-wise for the three-circle model, some focus a lot on FFA, some focus a lot on SAEs, and some focus a lot on classroom. Uh, what what are some of the best what are some of the best example school wise that you visited that have had 
almost a perfect representation of each aspect of the three circle model where their students have been getting a really good education on those aspects. Hmm. You know, I, I don't know that you can say that there's a perfect model that can be applied to every environment. Um, so each community and each individual school and the administration that are in that school all have separate expectations of what the ag program should look like. So I think one of the things that we can say is that um, there are some great representations of schools that are building a program that best meets the needs of their community. And so um, I think Farrah Johnson in Deltona is doing a great job of that. Um, she does a great job of trying to build that well-rounded classroom involving FFA and involving the community um, and getting students out of the community to really promote the things that they're learning through their SAE programs. Um, I think that the Lions um, are doing a great job um, up in Lafayette and really trying to see this well-rounded program in a rural setting. So I think that there's phenomenal programs across the state of Georgia. I think it's about really molding that program to to really meet the needs of that community and making sure that your stakeholders are happy with the job that you're doing um, because it's it's all about community development when we talk about ag ed is that the community and the industry in that community has to help guide what it is that we're teaching and how that we're how we're really engaging our students and the what, what our students are learning um, as a product of being in our program. And so I think that that, that whole well-rounded component comes together to really say this is a model program. And that model program that you're holding in one community may not really apply and be effective in another. Gotcha. Yeah, it's funny, you can go to 10 different or 10 or 100 different ag ed programs, but you'll find that no one is, no two are exactly alike. They're always different. They have different FFA focuses, different SAE focuses, different instructions because the industries and the communities are always different. So it's really cool to see just how diverse those programs can be. Yeah, uh, it, it absolutely is. I, I think it's fascinating to see um, really how how different each of those those programs are and they're all successful. Now, let's transition to something I know you're super passionate about, and that's experiential learning. Can you tell us exactly what that is? So experiential learning is an opportunity for students to learn in a hands-on environment, but really working through a four-step process. Um, so they start with this idea of a concrete experience and, and something that happens in their life. Um, it's something that they're doing, whether it's a behavior or a skill that they're developing and they're practicing it. Um, as they practice it, they then go through a reflective observation phase where they think about what went well, what didn't go well, um, and they make some reflections and, and some observations about things that have happened during that experience. They then go into a stage called abstract conceptualization, which is where they take those reflections and they start thinking about new and innovative ways that they could change their interaction or change their behavior to hopefully be more successful the second or the next time. And then um, they go into this idea of conceptualization where they then put it into practice and they actually then work through um, practicing that new technique and going into that idea of a concrete experience again. And over and over they work through that process. Um, and, and Kolb or David Kolb is really known for putting together the current model that we typically use in experiential learning um, with those four steps um, and how they actually interact. One of the cool things is, is I think that almost everything that we do in Ag Ed is experiential in some way. And I think that that's one of the reasons that so many students are so active and so involved and interested in Ag Ed is because we give them an opportunity to go out and provide a hands on experience for them to learn um, things in our classes and the curriculum. Now, what what got you on to experiential learning? Was there some something you saw in the classroom while you were teaching middle high or even college that kind of got you very interested in that learning process? Yeah, um, one of the things that I loved was this idea of SAE, so individualized student learning. And so when I was teaching, I found students really became passionate about something, and that is why they really got involved in our Ag Ed program. And so SAE is the one thing that really makes us different than every other curriculum area. And to me, that's what really got me passionate um, about experiential learning, because it's a it's a true and proven way that we use experiences to help educate our students. Uh, and so to me, that was where I started was that was really interesting. And I wanted to know more about how SAEs were being used um, nationally. I wanted to know more about how teachers were actually implementing and developing them so that they were meaningful projects for students. 
but at the same point still adhering to this idea of rigor and ensuring that it was something that was meaningful and it was going to help them apply that knowledge that they learned in their classes. And now I, I think my interest in experiential learning has grown and changed a little because now I'm really interested in seeing not only how it works in an ag ed classroom and especially with SAE, but I also want to see how do we better incorporate that into a college classroom. Um, a lot of times we think about college and we think about a faculty member or a professor standing at the front of the room and lecturing for an hour or for 50 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. And at the end of that lecture, everybody packs up their stuff and they walk out the door. And so how do we make those environments more engaging by giving them experiences to apply that knowledge that that, that professor is um, actually conveying uh, during their lectures? Yeah, now, when I was at UF, I had you as a TA, which I mean, not trying to be biased. I think you're my favorite TA. And I remember we had, I can't remember what class it was. It was that shop class or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, before we started going to the shop, we would learn about that, the aspects of welding or of woodworking. And we would learn that. Then we would actually go do it in a lab setting, whether it was we were doing wiring work for light bulbs or welding something. And then after that class, the next day or the next week, we'd be in our classroom reflecting on that. And we were like, wow, we're actually learning it from our students' perspective, and we're seeing how beneficial it is to actually contemplate something, do it, and then reflect on it, kind of see what we learned, what we could improve upon next time. So it was a really cool learning experience, and that was definitely some of my favorite college classes. Yeah, and, and some of the students that I work with now, I actually teach a class we call it Agri-Science for Teachers. I mean, it kind of follows that same model. Uh, where we go and we engage in a variety of different things. So um, actually last week, uh, my class actually went out to our swine unit and we processed piglets um, to actually get them ready to go into the production um, system. And so I think that that's really interesting because they get a chance to practice the skills that they're going to need to teach. And then we actually talk about well, what did that really mean? Um, in, in some cases, what are the science and the mathematic principles that are already inherent in what we did? And how do we actually exemplify those for our students? Um, we do another one where we actually go over to the meat science lab and we grade carcasses and we actually go through um, and see an animal go from standing and all the way to the, the freezer. Um, and so what does that harvesting process look like? And so that they can actually understand how they can convey all of these ideas and these, I mean, really complex scientific processes, how can they convey that to their students? And I think that that's just a really neat way for them to have a real picture idea that they can use those experiences to tell stories to their students because they may not have those facilities to necessarily work with, but they can definitely provide a story to provide that detail so that they can actually visualize what's really happening. Yeah, I remember the the different classes I had in college. I had a soils class, biology class, and those those always had labs with them, of course, but the labs seemed to be completely separate you didn't really reflect on anything you just kind of you took what you learned in the classroom but then afterwards you didn't reflect on it you're just like oh well we did a lab and that was it but all the ag ed classes we prepared for it we did the exercise or the lab and then we reflected afterwards and so there were much more i mean just the the, the way we learned those was much more beneficial than just the regular classes i i completely agree and i think that that's um one of the great things that we get to do in ag ed uh, and that maybe some other people just haven't actually figured out yet. And I think that we can help lead that change in our educational system um, to make those changes for students. Now, you've been in the teaching game for a while. Uh, have you noticed any trends in the past maybe five or 10 years in ag ed that have been more and more popular? So I think that we definitely are moving and we continue to move to a more student-centered approach. Um, I also think, and that's what I think that we've seen a lot in education as a whole, the other one that I see a, a bigger push for is this idea of ag literacy. Um, so for a long time, we've had this idea of a dichotomy in the way that we teach and what we teach as being either teaching in agriculture or teaching about agriculture. Um, so when we teach in agriculture, it's all about skill development and providing um, the skills necessary to go into a career in agriculture. When we teach about agriculture, it's more about literacy. And I see this push to teach agricultural literacy every single day. Um, we see the change in uh, course curriculum across the country. We see the change in the types of programs and where programs are opening. So from more uh, rural communities to seeing more ag programs in urban communities. Uh, and that the, the traditional 
animal science or plant science courses maybe aren't being taught. It's more about how can we engage in those same ideas and understand a consumer's aspect of how those industries are really important to our lives. The other thing that I've seen is that actually in the state of Georgia, um, last year in April, uh, Senate Bill 330 was signed into law, which began and developed elementary agricultural education programs in the state of Georgia. And so we're in the process of actually pre preparing all of that curriculum and the certification avenues uh, to actually start teaching agriculture to elementary school students. And when I look at the curriculum and I look at the things that are going to be taught, it's all about literacy and understanding where their food comes from and how to make healthy choices when they're eating and they have the choice to decide um, what foods they're going to eat. And so I think that that's just a really cool aspect and a really cool trend uh, that's really kind of coming out of this is that we're trying to say agriculture is for everybody, which it is. I mean, we wouldn't live without it. And so it's a way for us to really touch more students and impact more students' lives. Because the one way that we make a change in the ag industry is becoming proactive in our communication and proactive in the way that we engage with the public. And so I think that if we can begin that early and trying to unhelping students understand what goes into providing that food or where their food comes from, we begin to see that shift in the, the public's perception of the agricultural industry. I couldn't agree more. That's that's super cool that they're starting ag ed in elementary schools in Georgia. Are, are there any other states that have started to do that? No, uh, Georgia right now, to my knowledge, is the leading state and the only state that's doing that. Now, there may be some programs nationally that as a middle school program that they're teaching some elementary classes, but there uh, there isn't another state to our knowledge that has um, elementary agricultural education as a curriculum area. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's really cool to go ahead and teach them ag topics while they're young. I mean, might as well. Plus, ag literacy, you're finding out more and more, especially with social media, there's so much wrong information out there that people really need to learn what's true, what's not. So getting them um, engaged in agriculture as young as, as young as possible is very exciting. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in this in the world where this concept of fake news um, has become a very, I mean, a hot topic, I think we have to do a great job in the ag industry of ensuring that fake news isn't out there about our industry. And I think that this is a great way that we can do it. Oh, absolutely. Well, Dr. Rubenstein, this has been fantastic. Uh, if people want to learn more about your work or if they want to learn more about the University of Georgia Ag Ed program, where should they go? Uh, you can visit our website. Um, it is uh, ALEC at UGA. Um, and so if you search that on uh, Google, it'll pull up our website. Um, all of our degree programs are listed there, as well as all of our faculty and some of the work that we're doing and things like that. Um, and so I think that's a great place to go and just learn a little bit more about us and, and what we're doing to, to spread the good word about agriculture and the agricultural industry. I love it. All right. Well, Dr. Rubenstein, thank you for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you, sir.